deep stretch. It's Moneymaker now in front, edging clear. Moneymaker and Wally Hennessy, they win the Hamiltonian Oaks in 155 and three. But they're all chasing the queen of trotting. Moneymaker in her final Meadowlands appearance is striding home and Moneymaker will do it. It's Moneymaker in the net ray. En alliance, donc cette victoire avec le panache également puisqu'elle ne sera plus rejointe malgré. For five years, competing in 105 races at 28 tracks and seven countries, Moneymaker made winning a habit. 67 times, at any distance, against any contender, male or female, Moneymaker won every classic trotting race everywhere in the world, some of them more than once. Lifetime earnings of $5.5 million made her the richest standard bred ever and the richest female racehorse of any breed anywhere in the world. With retirement looming in the fall of 2000, it seemed that there were few goals left for Moneymaker to aspire to. The words of turf historian John Hervey describing the career of another great trotter, Greyhound, could also apply to Moneymaker. Quote, there was nothing in sight to compare to him, either in contest or against the watch and his owner felt he had richly earned a life of ease for the rest of his days. In making his farewell bow, it was decided that once again something new and novel would be attempted. That something new and novel was an attempt to break the world record for trotting under saddle. The record had been on the book since 1866 when the great trotter Dexter carried a rider in 218. The holder of the record when Greyhound attempted it was Holly Rood Boris, who trotted a mile in 205 and a quarter in 1936 with Miss Helen James riding. With Francis Dodge Johnson, later Van Lennep astride, Greyhound enhanced his mystique by lowering it to 201 and three quarters in 1940. Over the next 54 years, Greyhound's records fell one by one, but his trotting under saddle mark stood until 1994 when Preferential and Brooke Nichols lowered it to 158 and two. With seven eighths of the mile complete, appears to be about to grab the world mark. Brooke Nichols and Preferential trot to the wire and they're going to be home in world record time. There it is, 58 and two. The mark seemed well within Moneymaker's capabilities, but after six years of pulling a sulky, how would she take to a saddle? And who would ride her? Since the 1930s, the trotting under saddle record holders had women riders, Helen James, Francis Dodge Johnson, and Brooke Nichols. Moneymaker's owners wanted to continue that tradition and give their mare a rider with accomplishments of equal distinction. Hall of Fame jockey Julie Crone made a trip to Winners International Farm in Columbus, New Jersey on September 22nd to ride Moneymaker in a workout that would decide if the record attempt would be made. Moneymaker readily accepted a saddle and crone like they'd been partners for years. In Julie Crone, Moneymaker would have a rider who was the winningest female jockey of all time, a pioneer who was the first of her gender in the Thoroughbred Hall of Fame. The consummate horsewoman, Crone was winning horse shows on a pony before she could read. And so the date was set, October 6th at the Red Mile, the same track where both Greyhound and Preferential had taken their marks. Moneymaker's trainer Jimmy Tactor and driver Wally Hennessy would drive the prompters. Can Moneymaker do it? Oh yes, she can definitely do it. She's a superb athlete, and I've been around many horses in my whole life, jumpers, team penners, like horses that do a lot of different things, and I've learned to appreciate them as athletes, and she is just a magnificent animal. Um, she has nicknames of like M Mother, you know, the Mothership, you know, Speedster, and like all those things, and the record is well within her grasp, and it's just a matter of like being the best jockey ever and not doing anything, just sitting there, and that's basically what I have to do today. I'm excited and unfortunately we don't have the greatest weather, it's strong wind on the backside and uh, a little chillier than it was the previous days here, but uh, I think she still uh, have a very good chance to do it. The day donned grey, windy and cloudy after a rainy night, less than ideal for a record. But this was closing day at the Red Mile and Moneymaker was ready to go. 
there would be no second chances. Jimmy Tactor put Moneymaker through warm-ups in her sulky, with the crowd watching every footfall. Jimmy Tactor joined Julie Crone and Wally Hennessy in signing photos of the mayor for racing fans. The line, like Moneymaker's list of accomplishments, seemed never-ending. Moneymaker was saddled in the Red Mile's open-air paddock, ringed by fans who wanted to look at this mare who dared to trot into the shadow of Greyhound. Julie Crone made a few last-minute calculations, writing fractional times that would add up to the record on the palm of her hand. As fans made a path for Moneymaker and Julie Crone to walk onto the track, the sun peeked through the clouds, casting a golden hue on the once and future Hall of Famers. Tactor and Hennessy, driving thoroughbreds pulling sulkies, joined Moneymaker and Crone after the post parade. They could run alongside and beside the duo, but never ahead or the mark would be invalid. A hush fell over the crowd as Moneymaker trotted up to the gate and the battle against the clock was joined. The quarter mile time would tell if the record could be reached. The first quarter was slow by Moneymaker's standards, but with a long straightaway in front of her, Hennessy and Tactor quickened the pace and Crone let Moneymaker loose. Moneymaker underway in her effort against the clock, going to beat 158.2 and Moneymaker and Julie have just reached the quarter mile mark. They trot past that barrier in 30 flat. When Greyhound did his time trial, he was there in 30 and three quarters, and Preferential with Brooke Nichols was there in 30 and a fifth, so we're a fifth ahead of the previous mark as the leading money-winning trotter or pacer, the leading money-winning standard bred of all time, is down the back stretch, approaching now the half-mile mark. So midway down the backside, Moneymaker and Julie Crone at the half-mile mark, and they reach that barrier in 58 flat. Preferential was there in a minute. So two full seconds ahead of the previous mark, and now Julie Crone up on Moneymaker since her around the upper turn headed toward the draw gate. Moneymaker by Speedy Crown from Nan's Catch, who herself won the Kentucky Futurity for Phillies right here over the Red Mile, approaches a three-quarter, and Julie has the filly there in 126-1. Preferential reached that mark in 29-4, top of the lane. And the greatest trotting mare in history, the greatest trotter of them all, the internationally renowned moneymaker, the internationally renowned Julie Crone, drive to the wire, and she's still going well. Here comes moneymaker to the wire, Julie Crone. She's going to be there, 54 and one. Once again, but for the last time, Moneymaker was given a new challenge, new rules in an old game for her, and she did all that could be expected of her, and more. Time and again, she made what was impossible for most horses look easy for her, back and forth across the ocean, at any distance, against all comers. She found a way to win. She was just fabulous. Um, you can just see her class in the paddock. She's been everywhere all around the world. And like I told everybody in the, after the, inter, the interview afterwards, that uh, I was so pleased just to be part of such a magnificent horse and um, such a great day. Um, the crowd turned out, the weather, it was like the most perfect day ever. And she performed up to par as she usually does. And I told Wally I made a mistake earlier and she fixed it. And he goes, that's what she does for me too. So <laughs> she's always there for you. And that was a pretty nice experience to be around her. Four and one-fifth seconds, 21 lengths. That's how much Moneymaker and Julie Crone beat the record by. It took 54 years for Greyhound's under-saddle record to be broken. And it may take another 54 years for someone to beat Moneymaker's time that day at the Red Mile. She's the best uh, standard bred in the world, so she has to be like the best. So it has to be the best experience I've ever had as far as uh, you know the uniqueness of riding a horse that's not a thoroughbred and uh, not just because of the fact that I was riding a horse under saddle at the trot but the fact that she is moneymaker and need I say more. As Tactor's second trainer and moneymaker's farrier Connie Svensson pulled off her shoes 
it was hard to imagine that this champion, for whom winning was nearly a foregone conclusion, would never compete again. And so to a life of ease for the rest of her days, for Moneymaker, what a farewell it was.